Hey guys, and welcome back to this week's vlog. This week it's gonna be interesting. It's all about distribution. You've got your CD ready, you've got your single ready, you wanna put it online for sale through Apple Music and iTunes and Google Play. We're gonna talk about the best way to do that today, right after the intro. Hey guys, and welcome back to this week's vlog. Like I said, today we're going to be talking about distribution. So you've paid all that money, you've recorded your EP, you've got your album or your single, and now what do you want to do with it? You want to put it online where people can stream it, and hopefully, uh, even maybe today people are still buying music, who knows, but you want to put it on iTunes, because let's face it, you got to have your music available everywhere that people buy and stream music. So when you do that, you need a distributor. Today I'm gonna to talk about two distributors in particular. One you've heard of, it's pretty predominant in the marketplace. The other one you may not have heard a lot about, but I wanna tell you about it for sure because I think it's pretty cool, some of the features that they offer. So we're gonna break down that today. Before we get started, I wanna remind you, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. All you gotta do is click that subscription button and make sure you hit the bell next to it so that you're notified every time I upload new content. Okay, so distributors. What do distributors do? They distribute your music to the various outlets like iTunes, Amazon MP3 and Amazon Music, Google Play, um, all Spotify, Pandora, all of the digital streaming and sales outlets and platforms. Because let's face it, if you've gone through all the hard work of writing great songs or finding great songs and going through the recording process, you do all that for one major reason, to either find your fan base or you're supplying your fan base with new content. And you wanna make sure that that content is available wherever it is that they shop or they stream their music. I'm sure many of you have gotten online and you've researched this topic. If you're an artist, I at least hope that you have. What I wanna talk about today are two options that are out there. One is TuneCore, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard. Some of you have probably used it in the past. We're gonna talk a little bit about it, but then also we're gonna talk about a newer platform called DistroKid. Uh, and DistroKid is something that I'm actually really excited about. Uh, a lot of other producers and, and record label owners and independent artists uh, and managers are starting to find out about this new platform. And I think it's very interesting and I'm gonna walk you through some of the reasons uh, why I think it's so interesting. But we're gonna compare the two uh, and then see what you think. You know, What do you think's the best fit for you and for your music? First thing we're gonna talk about is TuneCore. Let's talk about some of the costs right up front. So for TuneCore, you can upload an album for $29.99 for the first year, um, and then it's $49.99 for each following year after that. For a single, if you're just gonna upload a single, you're looking at uh, $9.99 per year, basically $10 per year. And then if you wanna upload a ringtone, you can upload that through them as well, and that costs you $19.99 per year. So let's go back over that just for a second. Keep in mind that the album, you're gonna pay $29.99 for the first year and $50 for the second year. So the album's gonna cost you 30 bucks to upload for the year, and then it's $50 a year for every year that you keep it on the platforms after that. For singles, it's $10, and for ringtones, it's $19.99. One of the reasons that made it popular was there are no fees that come out of that. They, they advertise that you keep 100% of the profits after you've paid them to upload that album, that single, or that ringtone. All of that money comes back to you. Now, that's really cool because uh, in most distribution, most what you would call normal distribution situations that like record labels have set up is 
Apple takes a percentage of those sales, and then the distributor takes a percentage of those sales as well. So a lot of times, even if you're talking about a major distribution deal, sometimes the labels are only getting 60% um, of that actual dollar on a single or 60% of the album sales overall. So when TuneCore came to the market and it allowed independent artists to upload their music to the various platforms like iTunes and Google Play and all of the others, and allowed them to pay a, a one-time fee up front, but then keep all of the revenue from the sales. That was groundbreaking. And they've since gone on and offered a lot of other services, but we're not going to get into those today. And I'll tell you why, because I don't believe they're worth it. Um, I think it's just a, a, another thing to try to get another 50 bucks out of you or another 100 bucks out of you. I've talked to several artists who have done some of the promotions and things through TuneCore. Um, they haven't really worked out or turned into much. Bottom line is you want to get your music onto iTunes, you want to get it onto Google Play, you want to get it streaming on Spotify and Apple Music and Deezer and some of the other platforms. That's the main thing you want to do. And TuneCore is a great option for that. They are certainly the biggest in the marketplace. Some of the other things that they talk about, this, the selling services, if you will, are you get to keep 100% of your music sales revenue, you keep 100% of your rights, you can sell your music worldwide on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Play, and 150 plus other digital store partners. Uh, you get daily sales trend reports with iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon. Um, that's always a really good thing. You need to know how many units you're selling, where you're selling them, how many streams you're getting. All that information is very important and you get that whenever you upload your content through Spotify. You get monthly music sales reports and they've got built in things where they can even help you design album artwork if you haven't done that. Um, various other services, like I said, that we're not going to go into today. Uh, the main thing we want to talk about is the price. So once again, with TuneCore, it's $30 a year for the first year to upload your full album. It's $50 a year every year after that. If you want to upload a single, it's $10 for the first year. If you want to upload a ringtone, it's $20 for the first year. So that's TuneCore in a nutshell. You can go onto TuneCore.com, read all the terms of service. Uh, you can read all about the other services that they offer uh, and get a much more in-depth um, idea of what I'm talking about than what we're going to cover in, in today's vlog. Um, but I wanted to, to just kind of hit the high points with you. I know a lot of you are releasing music and you want to release music. Uh, and you're not sure what to do with it uh, and where to go and which distribution platform to use. So I just wanted to do this quick vlog this week and hopefully you get something, uh, get something out of it. Now, the second platform that I want to talk about is DistroKid. DistroKid is fairly new to the marketplace, but a lot of major independent artists are starting to gravitate over to DistroKid for some of the features that we're going to talk about um, right now. First of all, let's start with pricing because I know that's important to everybody. With DistroKid, you pay only $19.99 or basically $20 a month to upload unlimited albums and songs for a complete year. That's right. Literally, TuneCore and others charge twice that. So with DistroKid, you pay $20 to upload unlimited content for the year. When the year rolls back around, you pay $20 again, and you can upload as much content as you want for the year. So right there, hands down, DistroKid wins the pricing battle because you can either pay the TuneCore way of $20 for the first year and then $50 for every year after that, or with DistroKid, all you have to pay is 20 bucks a year, and you can upload as many singles as you want, as many full albums as you want. There's no restrictions on that. It's just $20 a year. The second feature that I like about DistroKid a lot, and I've uploaded albums for independent artists that I've produced through both. Uh, some just preferred to use TuneCore because it has the name brand. Uh, one of the selling features that DistroKid talks about a lot is that they tend to get their content on the digital platforms two times faster than other digital distributors. 
I have, in fact, found that to be true. Um, I know that TuneCore, when you upload something to them, they like for it to be done a minimum of two to three weeks in advance of when you want that album or single released. Um, with DistroKid, I've actually uploaded a an EP and I made it live for the next day and it was there and it was in all of the stores simultaneously at the same time within three days, uh, within the next day. So that I found w w was a, a very good selling point. You know, it's always a good plan to have a release schedule for your music. Yes, you need to plan it out. You need to know I'm going to release this album on this date and that needs to be a good minimum 30 days in advance. A lot of you, one of the major questions I get all the time is how do I get my music featured on the home page or the, the front page of iTunes? Um, there's a long algorithm behind that, but basically let me give you the, the basics of this. Um, because I've had lots of albums that I've produced um, actually get and make it to the front page of iTunes and also the individual genre pages within iTunes as well. Um, back years ago when I owned a record label, we had a major distribution deal. And what they told us uh, from our distributor seems to be true. Um, iTunes would like to have your EP album, single, whatever it is that you're releasing. They would like to have it 30 days in advance of the release date. Because although there are very few people within actual iTunes itself, like seriously, there's less than 10 people, um, they like to review that content. What they ask you to do is submit marketing material. Why should they? It, basically, the marketing material is uh, who is the artist and why should we give them a, a feature on the front page. So you list them. We're going to be doing social media advertising, or this is the second album from this artist and they had a previous number one or sold X amount of units. Something that gives iTunes an idea that they think that this product should be featured uh, for a specific reason on the homepage. They like that information 30 days in advance of release. And they review all of that information. They actually do listen to the music. Um, they make sure that it fits into the right genre that you've listed that music for. Uh, and then if it makes sense, then yes, they will feature uh, your project. They do have favorites. I found that. They do play favorites in that they prefer certain distributors over other distributors because I've seen other distributors content uh, get featured way more often than some others. But let me tell you this, don't plan on getting premium placement within iTunes. Don't plan on it. I've always looked at it as a happy accident. If it happens, that's great. If not, that's okay too. It's still your responsibility as the artist to do a great job of marketing your product and putting out a plan and putting together a plan and following that plan for the release of your music. That being said, I have seen that when we've uploaded stuff through DistroKid that it has hit the iTunes store and the other stores a lot sooner because what you find a lot of times is that with TuneCore and other distributors, you may say that you want this album to go live on this certain Friday or on this certain date. Um, you would think that if you've uploaded it a good two, three weeks or even 30 days in advance, that that album would be available in iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, Spotify, Pandora, all these places at the same time when you've given them enough lead time to the release. Um, what I have found through TuneCore more often than not is that it will go live on iTunes as scheduled, uh, but then there's a two or three day lag time between it being available on iTunes and being available on Amazon or especially Spotify. I've seen it go two weeks uh, before it's actually uploaded to Spotify. What I've noticed through DistroKid that I really liked was that even on one that I did for the next day or for three days or a week release out, I've noticed that it hit all the stores simultaneously and it was there. Because the one thing you do want to do when your music does come out is you want to be able to get on social media and you want to, people send, you want to be able to send people where you want them to go to buy or stream your music 
and you want it to be there. You don't want to have to structure your marketing plan to think, okay, well, it is live on iTunes, but it's not on Amazon, so we can't use that that link yet. We can't use this. You want everything to be nice and concise and simple to where if it's release day on Friday, it's a release day everywhere, and you can have that confidence knowing that your product is going to be live in all those different stores and all the different streaming outlets at the same time. And I found with DistroKid that that actually uh, does happen more often so than TuneCore or some of the other online distributors. And of course, just like Spotify, you pay the $20 a year to upload unlimited content and all of the revenue and all of the sales come back to you. So you keep 100% of everything that you sell. Um, but let me tell you about the feature that I am excited about most with DistroKid that I have not seen available in any other online uh, or digital distributor. And that is it will allow you to go in and create a party. Let's say you have your product and there are multiple people that are supposed to share in the revenue of that project. Maybe a producer or songwriters that have publishing deals, uh, investors, uh, various people that have an ownership stake in the sales and the revenue that come from that project. Get this, you can go in and create that party and you can allocate any percentage that you want of the sales of an album or a single at any percentage that you want and allocate those to go directly to that person. Now, that's pretty cool. All you have to have is their email address. And what happens is if, if you've got an album and you sell one copy of that album and 33% of that album sales are supposed to go to an investor, you can put your investor's email address in there and it will allocate 33% of that sale and send it to them via their email address and they can pop it right into their PayPal account. That is really cool. I was a part of a project uh, earlier this year to where I was, in, in lieu of being paid for producing the project, I took a share of the proceeds from everything that the, this project would sell. Um, and they were using DistroKid and they set up this party and now every time something sells, it automatically sends it to my PayPal account. I think this is a really unique and amazing structure that DistroKid has put together because especially for independent artists, think about this. You know, a lot of times finances are a problem. So you have to go get money over here or go get money over here or borrow money from this person. You can keep track of how much you owe everybody that has an ownership stake in that single EP or album. And you can designate, this person gets $5 from every record sold. This person gets $5 from every record sold. Or if you're talking about a single, this person gets nine cents. If it's a songwriter, you can allocate your songwriter uh, royalties. If you're an independent artist and you don't have a label taking care of all that, you can set all that up within DistroKid so that any time you sell something, it automatically pays that third party. This is amazing, guys. Really something to check out. Check it out for yourself. Visit distrokid.com and uh, you can read all the testimonials. You can read a lot more than what I've told you uh, today. Um, but let's compare the two really quickly. TuneCore costs more. It costs $30 for an album, $10 for a single, $19.99 or $20 for a ringtone, but that's only for the first year. The costs go up every year after that. On pricing with DistroKid, it's $20 a year and you can upload unlimited content. Next year rolls around, you pay your $20, you can continue to upload as much content as you want. Looking at the revenue, both of them are the same. As long as you pay those fees, all of the revenue from your sales are gonna come directly back to you. So they're kind of level on that playing field. As far as being able to upload and get your content on the platforms faster, I have to give this one to DistroKid because I've seen it work faster 
and I've seen it be more efficient. So I would go with DistroKid on that. The one thing though that I have to say that leans me heavily towards DistroKid being just an amazing digital distribution platform for independent artists is the revenue sharing capability and that ability to be able to allocate certain percentages or dollar amounts of sales to various other people on your team. I think that is amazing. It's groundbreaking to be able to do that. So it is important that you've got this record, you've got this EP or this single, you want to get it out into the marketplace, you want to get it out into the world, you want to make sure people can buy it. Digital distribution is so important these days and it's important to find the right partner when it comes to getting your music in front of your fans and potential fans. So you've got TuneCore, you've got DistroKid, you've got a lot of others, but me personally, I would invite you to check out DistroKid and see how they can help you get your music in front of your fans. I do want to say today's vlog was not sponsored in any part by either one of these companies, TuneCore or DistroKid. This is just my honest assessment from using both platforms and knowing by talking to so many independent artists how important it is to make sure that you use the right distribution platform and to make sure that your music is always available everywhere people buy and stream music. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this week's vlog about digital distribution. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, feel free to leave them in the comments below or send me an email. My email address is in the description below. And if you like today's video, you got something out of it, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button one time. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs button down twice. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and then hit the little bell notification next to it so that you know every time I upload new content. Guys, until next week, keep being creative, keep pressing the boundaries, and there's nothing wrong with being independent. See you next week.